I think we both sound good as individuals. I do. I think we both sound good. Tales of Mandrew Podcast, episode one. <laughs> Is it mine now? <laughs> I have it. So I'm sitting here. I've called this podcast today because it's a very important day. For the past three days, I've been stranded in San Diego. I came down here on Wednesday. Today is now Saturday. Came down here for a very good concert with my buddy Mandrew. My band here, so Mandrew sitting to my right. Great concert. It's Portugal the Man, Cage the Elephant. It's the greatest. We got a little bit drunk. They played songs. People were there. These cougars thought we were cool. Oh, we talked awesome. about the Hitachi wand. Hmm? We, we asked them the name dildo. of the Hitachi wand. It's not really a dildo. No, it's whatever. a vibrator. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a back massager vibrator. <laughs> and I came in a conversation because I'm seeing this black girl and she has one. Oh. Like she told me she had a dildo and I thought she had like a little one or something, like a little pink one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what everyone assumes. she pulled out this <laughs> the Hitachi wand is like, if you've never seen one, it's the size of my arm. <laughs> <laughs> it plugs into the wall. It's not like a portable thing. Um... But since the concert on Wednesday night, so for Thursday, Friday, and now Saturday, I've been laying on your couch poisoned. Poisoned by me. That's the way it feels, man. I've been vomiting. I've been, I don't know how to say this politely, pissing out my ass. <laughs> and <laughs> I haven't left like this area. Like We went to the beach today. That's like a six-minute walk. Yeah. That's the farthest I've gone in three days. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and to make it even more interesting of a situation... Tomorrow, on Sunday, I have a jiu-jitsu tournament, <laughs> one that I was looking forward to a lot. But you know exactly what this is like, man? It's like, um, so you know how everybody believes in God? So <laughs> it's how like, great <laughs> is our God? So this is how great our God is. Same so on the, the past couple podcasts, I've been complaining, not, not complaining, but just talking about how lazy I've become and like how... I've, I've just been smoking weed, laying on the couch, watching movies. Mm-hmm. So for the past three days, I've been laying on the couch, smoking weed, and watching movies with you. <laughs> Some <laughs> because of the greatest, though. <laughs> of poison. Because I've been poisoned. But the other side of the coin is this tournament on Sunday, I had quite a big ego about it. Oh, really? Yeah. Like, since I've lost my job, man, I've, just been, I've been training a lot of jiu-jitsu. I've gotten a lot better. Huh. And so I started thinking, like, I'm going to smoke these fools. Always a dangerous thing to think. And it's almost like, this is the way it feels, our generous God looked at my situation and said, yeah, you want to lay on the couch? Yeah, you think you're going to win? Okay, lay on the couch. <laughs> vomit, vomit on this couch. Yeah. Think you're going to win? All right, vomit until the day before. <laughs> <laughs> like, legitimately, in these past three days, I've lost between eight and ten pounds. There you go. I, I've measured that up. on three different scales, so that's why <laughs> I can't say for sure. Yeah. But, um... I feel like our scale is actually pretty accurate. Okay, so on your scale is 138, and okay. tomorrow I'm fighting in the 150-pound division. <laughs> All right, you're close. Yeah. <laughs> you walk in eating in and out and like everyone's like, what the fuck, man? I mean, it sounds like a terrible thing to eat right before combat. <laughs> it's not very... <laughs> yeah, but I'm just saying you could. You know, you have the option over the other guys. I have make the it... weight. I, it would be better if I just held it in my hand. Yeah, or just make a sign that says, I can eat in and out right now, bitches. <laughs> okay. I'm not going to do any of this. <laughs> but Obviously. like Leota Machida, he used to weigh in drinking water. I can do that. <laughs> yeah. With like a gallon of water. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's just so interesting I was so close like this morning to calling my coach I mean like Ron I, there, there's no way I can fight but then um, your beautiful roommate Steve he gave me a banana <laughs> and then I ate it and I didn't vomit did he give you applesauce too? he gave me applesauce nice they're great go. things food of the gods but I was so close to throwing in the towel but then I, I keep I've been reading all these stoicism books are you familiar with stoicism? Mm. From what you tell me? It's the philosophy of the, the ancient Romans. Like Marcus Aurelius is the most famous example. He's depicted in Gladiator. Mm-hmm. He's the one true emperor. Yeah. And um, so I've been reading a lot of their books. And the whole thing about it is that life is going to be hard. So here's good ways to deal with it. And so this is like a picture-perfect stoic scenario. Yeah. Like, straight from the books. Yeah. Like, <laughs> Just here, puke for three days straight and then strangle men. Yeah. <laughs> and then do the thing you want most. <laughs> yeah, so it's perfect. And I, and I know that, like, this is a good opportunity because I called my mom this morning just to tell her, like, my situation. Like, telling her why I didn't come home two days ago when I said I would. Yeah. Um, and just being like, yeah, like, I'm vomiting. Like, uh, I'm fighting tomorrow. And... Obviously, like just playing her role in life, she's like, "Yeah, there's no way you're fighting." Yeah, as she should, right? Yeah, she's yeah, just yeah. like worried. That's any parent, and she doesn't. She doesn't fight. She doesn't know. Yeah, yeah. she doesn't know how important it is. Um, 
And it's just like that, that's exactly like anytime you're making this tough decision, there's going to be those, those temptations like. Oh yeah, just don't want to fight. Just mom says you shouldn't fight. Yeah, mom's right. She's smart. Yeah, she knows well. It's just like we were talking about last time with uh, was it my math test? It's like the day of a uh, big festival, big music festival. Yeah, so I was like the most oh. important math test of like of your life essentially. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, you know, they say like, always say like um, like the next thing is most important. Yeah, yeah, and it, like it is for grad school, which is pretty pretty important. Yeah, so it's like the the exact same thing. Like people are just, they're just like, yeah, just bow out, just give up. Mm -hmm. How yeah. great is our God? <laughs> give us these opportunities yeah. to rise up and overcome. Marshall, my God, <laughs> did I do this? <laughs> yeah, you're the only one who told me like, uh, just just do it. <laughs> yeah, you and Nike, but that's it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God for Nike. <laughs> what a generous at a billboard. God. Oh. <laughs> All right. It's like, oh man, I just. Been vomited out 10 pounds should i quit or should i just do it <laughs> they got us by the balls they know all right so it. since seeing that I, I haven't done much in the past three days and i just talked for five minutes um i got nothing more to say I'm just gonna <laughs> lay out that situation that's it <laughs> yeah well because i kind of think this will be a two-part podcast i can't say for sure oh. but i think i'll record more after the event Nice. You like, know, just like see how it went. Like, yo, yeah. got on the mats and vomited on the guy's shoes. And yeah. why the fuck is he wearing shoes? <laughs> <laughs> vomited on his cat. I don't know why his cat was there. Yeah. <laughs> just saying, like, well, because it's possible I'll wake up tomorrow and, like, be back you know, worse or I don't know. No, uh, I'm, I'm going to, like, It'll be better. Uh, oh, okay. Thanks, man. See? But, <laughs> <laughs> but that, that's part of, like, a, a stoic. Um, one of the practices that anyone can take part in is. Uh, negative vis visualization like they always say um, like all my all my counselors at school have talked about positive visualization like you go to a job interview and you close your eyes and you think hard and you visualize yourself winning like doing well mm -hmm. um, so stoic negative visualization applies to any situation you just like think about how it could go wrong you think about the holes in your plan yeah so you have a plan to go to grad school where could it go wrong like okay maybe i won't pass the test that's possible yeah maybe um funding goes up maybe scholarships you know there's all these things in the way yeah, yeah, yeah. maybe i should use my own examples as opposed to just guessing at other people's <laughs> but so for the tournament tomorrow it's very possible that like i'll feel worse in the morning it's possible um yeah i feel like the best as soon as we're done i'll be vomiting and we'll Oh, want to drive? That's yeah. the thing. I, I, how many days in a row? Excuse me. I said the word vomiting now. <laughs> feelings. But I, I keep threatening to leave. I'm like, I gotta get north. I have to go back to Orange County. That's where like the most health is, and my parents are. Yeah, like every day. And then we keep trapping you here with ass piss. <laughs> <laughs> That's been the main thing. Like I, I even um. Okay, so remember yesterday I brought up the point that. You make it it's, sound like I'm enticing illegal. you with ass piss. Like, <laughs> here's some ass piss. Stay. <laughs> Five dollars a piss. <laughs> but I brought up the point that um, it's illegal to pull over to the side of the road and ass piss on the five. Mm -hmm. That's part of. I, I got to that conclusion by negative visualization. I was like, okay, I need to drive. How could this go wrong? Yeah. There's a general, the usual factors of like car crashes and things, but like, um, more realistically, at that moment, a bigger concern would have been. I'm going to be on this road and get that feeling. <laughs> that little get twitchy that feeling. Yeah, even now, <laughs> man, like, I, there's no way I would, like, let out a fart. You know, there's, like, a certain it, pressure you can do to, like, make your fart heard in a crowded room. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. there's no way I'd do that. There's no <laughs> way. I'm not ready for that. You sh you'd shoot up a couple feet. You just ass pressure. No, just man, I would just, like, have to throw away my underwear and probably wouldn't be friends anymore and... That's fine. I think, <laughs> I think every one of us has been driving down the five and has shit their pants at least once. Because <laughs> yeah. it's just like the perfect like drive to make it difficult. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's like an hour and a half sometimes. Yeah, I did a drive because uh, I used to play paintball out in Ramona. Probably a story I just like shouldn't tell. I should just take to the grave with me. Me and Kevin Walsh, but <laughs> throw him under the bus. No, I mean he was in the car. I like shit next to him. Um, so. <laughs> So yeah, it was like, uh, I had to be at practice in Ramona, which is like inland San Diego, and this was back when I lived in Orange County, so it was like a two and a half hour drive. I had to be there at eight. So I had to wake up at like 4.35, and then just drive straight down to San Diego and like 
the sketchiest way possible. Um, and so one time, like, I was, like, on this windy road where there's about, like, 15 feet for both lanes, and it's just a cliff. Jesus there's, Christ. There's, there's, like, literally nowhere to go, and I'm driving down this, this, like, windy road. The sun's, like, right in my face, and then I hear that grumble. And I was like, oh, no. Heard it before you felt it? Yeah. I was like, <laughs> I was like you can't be doing this to me. Not right now. So Not now, bud. <laughs> I was like, oh, got to. I'm like, we got to civilization. And I got to a place. And I was like, ah, they're not open. Damn. <laughs> All right. Well, got to make it to the field now, right? Got to make it to practice. So I just, like, tried to book it there. And about like two streets before actually getting there, just couldn't, just couldn't <laughs> hold it. And the grumble, the grumble beat me. You know. Did your friend know what you're going through? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I was talking. I was place? talking him through the whole thing. I was <laughs> yeah. like, Yo, yeah, these grumbles. Like, That's so much better than if you guys were like just in silence, <laughs> like just listening to music. You didn't want to like, everything's fine, man. You know, like some people just lie like that. <laughs> just preconditioned. <laughs> like we have friends. We have a friend who has a bachelor party next weekend who might shit himself without telling anyone. Yeah, yeah, that'd be funny. <laughs> that'd be so funny. He might just like, nope, all good. <laughs> all good. And they go buy new pants real quick. And just be like, oh, yeah, I'm fine. <laughs> Blame it on us somehow. It's like, it's just like such an uncomfortable situation. Because you got to throw them away. And there were SpongeBob underpants too, so I was like kind of sad about that. I feel you. But they had little SpongeBob faces all over them. Now they're in some porta potty in the middle of inland San Diego. So as much as that image brings me joy, (laughs) (laughs) there's something cool about like being this sick. Like the last time I was this sick was in Thailand and it was like some of the best three days in Thailand. I was there for three months, but the only time I got food poisoning, I was up in Pai, which is like um, a hippie community in the, in the mountains. And most of Thailand is beach, right? Yeah, Yeah. yeah. But in the North, it's all, it's very mountainous. And so Pai is like a hippie touristy destination and the fact that like they have reggae bars all over uh, yeah, it, yeah. it's like most towns it's, just, it's split by a river uh, and so along the river is just reggae bars so anywhere you are in the town you can hear a bass line and you know there's a lot of competition so there's a lot of like um like cool parties there's a lot of cool stuff going on it's yeah, one of those yeah. places where you go and it's like what are you doing tonight oh shit i didn't hear about that well now you know you know how confusing that can get when you have like three things you want to do yeah and so uh, i was going through that and then i got food poisoning and it was such a relief i was like well now i got one thing to do <laughs> i'm just gonna do this I'm just gonna ask this <laughs> i'm just gonna ask this for a while <laughs> and so i got a five dollar a night bungalow like made out of bamboo right off the river on like the not populated part of town but you can still hear a bass line yeah still kind of like every once in a while i can identify the song like it's mostly Bob Marley songs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I just had like a little bit of weed. I had a Kindle, and I had on my tablet the movie This Is the End. So for like two, this is the end. That that's the Seth Rogen movie where um, it's like the apocalypse. And they're uh, trapped in the house by oh, themselves. Oh yeah, yeah. With like Danny McBride. And yeah. Like Aziz Ansari, real quick. The All Star cast. <laughs> Aziz Ansari for like a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Aziz Kevin Ansari Hart. has the has the best death. Right. It, it might be. It might. I might be mixing up him or Kevin Hart. But one of them, they get sucked into a big hole. And um, who, who's the black guy from The Office? He has a towel the whole movie. Oh, uh, yeah. He sings that song, Take your panties off, take your panties off, take your panties off. <laughs> <laughs> and so the, whoever's in the hole looks up to him and is like, Help me, man! He looks down and is like, You're already in the hole! And runs off. <laughs> <laughs> like some, for some reason, that, that's the, the perfect, uh, perfect line. Yeah. <laughs> you know, the perfect line in that movie. It, it's not like that great of a movie. Yeah, but it's like the, it's, the way it's I, I thought about it is like it, it's one of those movies with too many voices going on. Like there's too many people involved in the script. Yeah. So it goes through many different phases. And of like, like some scenes are great, some scenes are painful. And almost like a, a, an essence of like jokes are trying too hard. They're yeah. Like yeah, we can make this I mean. joke better, but like it was already good. And like. Ah. Yeah, and so the but the other perfect line is. Everyone's kind of freaking out, but the main guy in the movie, Jay, he's not, oh, I guess he is, he, he is like the most amount of scenes. Yeah. He's the one visiting town. He's the outsider. It's like when he finally starts panicking. And so, um, so many memes. 
<laughs> Who's the guy? Jonah Hill looks yeah. at him and he's trying to help him out. And James Franco's like, man, why are you helping him and not me? And Jonah Hill grabs him by the shoulders and goes, he's not as strong as you are. <laughs> 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 like that's not a line that like m I feel like most uh, people would sign off on. Yeah, it's not, like, <laughs> it's some not producer would be like, mm, get rid of that bullshit. Yeah, it's not an obvious like hilarious line, but something about it was just so perfect. <laughs> and so anyway, like I'm just sitting in this bungalow, dying laughing at this movie that like I had, I didn't have high hopes for it. It had like terrible commercials and yeah. like, the people told me they liked it. I didn't really trust them. Yeah, it's always the weirdest. I feel like movies by word of mouth. As, it's always so funny, yeah. you know, because like there's some people like I very much trust with movies, right? Like you're one of them. Morgan's sometimes one of them. A lot of times one of them. Yeah, yeah. Morgan's pretty good. Uh, but I feel like I, I feel like I have to keep bringing up movies on this podcast because I hear so many like miss so much misinformation about the about movies and what what I think a big part of it is is people base which movies exist by advertisements on TV. Yeah, which is like a normal thing a normal way to think about it but that's kind of like if you based all your beer drinking on what's on the beer on tv yeah like it's, like it's just like all, <laughs> yeah all the best that exists is heineken like and that that makes sense like that not everyone's going to go out of the way to find out about beer but if you're complaining about movies being remakes and unoriginal just don't watch so much tv go online like <laughs> ask me for a recommendation like what what's the movie we just watched Oh, everybody wants some. Everybody wants some. It's yeah. fucking an amazing movie. Like it's, it came out a couple months ago. Yeah. I didn't hear anything about it. Yeah, I didn't know it existed. It's by the greatest director of all time. Yeah, um, and so that that's the way I found out about it was the way I pick movies is um, based on director. That's the way that I look up movies. That's the way I find out about them. Such so a good way. Dazed and Confused is one of my favorite movies. It's just such a solid movie. It's about uh, high school kids in the 70s. I, I assume most people have seen it. If not, it's a fucking classic. Great movie. Uh, yeah. Best soundtrack of all time. Yeah, it's just like, rock even, and roll. Not even close. There's not much of a storyline. It's, kind of, it's very episodic. Yeah. Just one day in the life of this group of high school kids. Yeah. And so I looked up who directed it. The guy who directed it is Richard Linklater. He also directed School of Rock, one of my favorite movies. He directed Before Sun... I forget which order it goes. Before Sunrise, Sunset. Before Sunset. Before Midnight. Yeah, and which I had heard about, but I hadn't seen at the time. And then I get all the way to the top and see he has a new movie. That's always an exciting thing, but you never really know. So I click on it. On IMDb, it's rated 8.2 at the time. IMDb is pretty... Uh, like, if, if something's highly rated on there, it's pretty credible. Yeah, you know what I mean? sometimes. Like, but uh, if you know nothing about it and it has a high rating on there... Like I've got, I this is how I pick movies as well. Is um, I just have some favorite theaters, like the one by UCI. Yeah. It's just a dope theater, and so I look what's playing. And if I don't know any of them, I check their IMDb rating. If it's above seven point five, I'm in. Well, that's cool. Yeah, <laughs> and so that's how I've seen a couple movies. But my point about the director thing is that like a lot of people get it confused. Like I was talking to Kasim about this. I was trying to tell him like, no, the director is the most important um, aspect of making a movie good, which I believe. I think he's the person with the most. Um, his hands are in the most departments. Yeah, he has the most influence. He has the most influence. Thank so, you. like, so, so it's not like a for sure thing. Like, Louis C.K. directed Pootie Tang, and then uh, once he delivered it to Sony, they remade the movie. They spent millions of dollars, like, re editing and, like, took away his power. Yeah. So, just because Louis C.K. did it, he made a different movie than you will see if you buy Pootie Tang, which you should do, support Pootie Tang. Yeah. It's a classic. Obviously. I've also never seen it. But, um,. <laughs> But anyway, Kasim, he would always tell me that movies, the mo most important factor is the actor. Oh. Which is yeah. a big mistake. Yeah, yeah. Because actors have very little influence in a movie. Right. The director tells them exactly how to do things. Like, yeah. <laughs> and they, they, what they say is based on the script. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For I the was, most part. I was going to say, I think the most, one of the most important people is the writer. Right. So. I think it's, it's got to be between director and writer. But the director has the impossible task of taking those words to life. Right. Like, a screenplay for a movie doesn't say much. Yeah, It's just true. words. Yeah. So, like, for example, one of the most famous scenes in Tom Cruise's career is in Risky Business. He dances for a while. It's yeah. like a really famous dance. I, yeah. I don't know the name of the song, but it's one of the most famous songs. It's the one where he was wearing socks. He was wearing socks. And, and so and all it. the screenplay said Underwear. was the name of his character and the word dances. 
Oh, yeah, yeah. It didn't say, you frame it in the middle, he's going to slide in on his socks, it's going to be this song. Yeah. That's the director who has to come up with all that. Yeah. Make it come to life. Yeah. So I think you're right. Like, I think behind the director, screenplay is important, but screenplays also get fucked with, and um, it, it's, it's, it's a harder thing to follow. Yeah, I mean, the whole process gets fucked with. Yeah. Entirely by money. It's like, oh, well, this doesn't make us more money. Right, like where, where they could have had like a solid glass of whiskey, they instead drink Pepsi because they make millions off of it. Like, yeah. <laughs> it's bullshit. Which can fuck with movies. Like, I know um, in Wayne's World, one of the best scenes is when they're singing <laughs> and, um, to Bohemian Rhapsody. It's oh. one, like the most iconic scenes in the whole movie, right? Yeah, it's yeah. right at the beginning. They're singing it. And the studio um, pleaded with them to use a Guns N' Roses song because they were more popular at the time. Oh, shit. But he looked at him, he's like, this is, um, Mike Myers is the person I'm referring to. He had a lot to do with that movie, right? He's the yeah. main dude. I don't know if he directed, but he had a lot of influence. It's his thing. Mm. And so he, he had a plea to them. He's like, no, I don't listen to Guns N' Roses. I listen to Bohemian Rhapsody. This is a real event. I was driving around with my brother. It has to be that real song. And so he fought with them on it. And then after it came out, Bohemian Rhapsody shot to the number one song in the country. Dang. Yeah, and so that just shows, like, the suits don't always know, like, what the consumer wants. Yeah. That I mean, scene is perfect with Bohemian Rhapsody. I'm sure it'd be pretty good with the Guns N' Roses song. Like, yeah. it wouldn't be terrible. Yeah. We wouldn't be sitting here going, like, bunch of bullshit. <laughs> but like, it's just, still like, upset that yeah. something else didn't happen. Yeah. <laughs> like, if I had heard that in an interview, like, shit Bohemian Rhapsody, I'm like, oh, that would probably be great. <laughs> it's like we're sitting here just fucking pissed off at the end of Gone with the Wind. Just, like, God. Which I am upset it. about because I've never seen Gone with the Wind. Yeah, don't. It's the worst. <laughs> it's the worst movie. It's like, it's, ah, oh God. It's so long. It's like, it's three hours. This girl bitches the whole time. Uh, it's well shot. Yes, definitely. <laughs> well shot. But outside of that, it's, it's, it's really a shit movie. <laughs> like, I feel you. I don't like it at all. Uh, for anyone um, who's, who's upset about the movie situation, I got three movies written on Manju's board. That will that are completely original, coming out soon. I think Swiss Army Man's already out, but these are in theaters. At least if you live in California, it's easy to see. I know some of you are in Taiwan. That's a lot harder. I feel for you, because Taiwan only gets like the biggest of blockbusters. Like well, Captain America. Six yeah, they don't get all all the Marvel <laughs> movies, all the Transformers. Six through five or something. But oh, if shit. That is your struggle. I feel for you, but you also have the internet. So torrent movies, if they're yeah. not available to you, yeah. that's exactly what it's for. It's not your job to do what, like, with what you're given. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, you, don't, yeah. you don't have to just drink the shit beer. You can go out and illegally download beer. That's my <laughs> point. <laughs> okay, so I think we only have two minutes left on. There's a countdown on this thing, so we're gonna keep this short. But three movies coming out soon: Swiss Army Man, Paul Dano and Daniel Radcliffe stuck on an island. Something about oh. Daniel Rack was dead. Yeah, I love everything with Paul Dano. Yeah, he's great. He's one of the best actors. There's one with him and I want to say uh, Robert De Niro. Robert De Niro is his dad. They're both authors and they're writing about each other's lives. That's also a great movie. I don't remember what it's called. Um, shit. So that sucks. But, you know. <laughs> it's easy to look up. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. a good movie. Just look up Paul Dano the and then watch next everything movie he's done. Is Cafe Society. It's a new Woody Allen movie. It, 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 it's really frustrating that Woody Allen's such a creep because he's like hard to like explain to people how great his movies are. Yeah, especially people upset by unoriginality. Like Woody Allen has never made a sequel. He's never done something that I felt like I've seen before. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. always like an amazing, hilarious. Not always hilarious, but like super original and fucking well done. And he's on a hot streak, man. Like he's a, I don't know how old he is. A hundred and two. But, like, he's getting better. Yeah. <laughs> just so weird. And, and it's, so like, he's... going completely unnoticed. Yeah, exactly. And I think because he's a creep. Like, he's just a creepy dude. Yeah. Like, I, I don't want to take, like, romantic advice from him, but his movies are fucking good. I also think people just write him off as just, like, oh, another fucking Woody Allen movie when they, like, haven't seen anything, like, probably more than two of them. Mm -hmm. If that, like, probably just one of them. So I think we have 30 more seconds for this part of the podcast. Oh, okay. That's what like, this countdown is. So the last movie is Don't Think Twice. It's a Mike Birbiglia movie. Mike Birbiglia has directed a couple great movies. He's a comedian, and this is about like the comedy scene, probably in New York. Um, looks fucking good. Swiss Army Man, Cafe Society, Don't Think Twice. Don't be upset by remakes and unoriginality. Step Ooh. outside the box, torrent shit. Also, Manager. real quick. Uh, so if you can't torrent stuff, if you're like limited... Just Google watch and then the movie title and then free. It like works every time for me. Pirate that shit. Part two. 
communications, parentheses, telephone, internet, etc. If you're charged with a crime, competent legal counsel. If you're in prison, job training and rehabilitation. Those are your ten basic rights. I got bad news for you, Rex. What? We just started recording at like number six. Really? Of those ten rights. It's chill. Rex Nelson's been reading here for about 16 minutes. <laughs> I, I thought we were recording the whole time. <laughs> you guys better remember those last four rights. <laughs> <laughs> Tales of a Cock Podcast, not, episode 14, part two. Because I'm not gonna read. I'm not gonna read them again. We're all done reading here, Rex. What's up, Rex? How are you, my friend? Thank you for coming I'm here fantastic. today with me. I just worked this finishing up this story that I started yesterday on the podcast. I just worked a solid 12 hours today. Perfect, man. Perfect. Well, come sit down, relax. You have a beer. Here's a cup of tea. A cup of tea. We got some airhead bites. We got some airhead bites. We're rich men, Rex. We, we are, are truly rich men. We, I describe us as the definition of rich men. Let me give you these headphones so you can see exactly how loud those airheads are. I don't know. Maybe they're fine. Anyway, so Rex, what do you know about my illness and the tournament I did today? Well, I know. Can you recap from part one? So, when did you go down to San Diego? Wednesday. Wednesday. So you went down to San Diego. Um, you drank. You went to a Portugal the Man and wait and something <laughs> elephant. Cage the elephant. Cage the elephant concert, which was awesome. Drank a four loco. I did. Went to the concert. I did. How much sleep did you get that night? Plenty. Plenty. A lot. So, you drove down to San Diego, put yourself into a toxic environment. <laughs> where there was a lot of people sweating. And, a know, lot of sweat. A lot of sweat, a lot of breathing. A lot of <laughs> Almost everyone there was breathing. A lot of closed I'd in I'd say 80% space. of the people there were breathing. Okay, that's, that's a good <laughs> ratio. And then you drank this liquid poison, which was probably sitting in your stomach throughout the night. True. Did not get washed out. Did you smoke any cigarettes or anything like that? No. Okay, so just the four loco. And then on Thursday morning, you proceeded to wake up and then have like, like a 12 course breakfast. <laughs> it was huge. <laughs> yeah. Like a hefty bowl of oatmeal. And like that would be fine. For people that don't understand, this bowl of oatmeal could probably, like, you can eat one <laughs> bowl and you have enough calories for the rest of the day. Yeah, yeah. That's kind of the thought. I put like peanut butter and like a whole avocado and like a whole banana in it. Yeah. On top of like a lot of oats. Honestly, <laughs> honestly, I'd say that that oatmeal is what got us through that Joshua Tree trip. Absolutely, man. Because it's good survival stuff. We we ate that for like breakfast and lunch. I'm pretty like at least like two two days when mm -hmm. we were out there. And so on Thursday morning, in addition to the huge oatmeal, uh, Mandra also made a smoothie of fruits and veggies, which I can't imagine was a problem, but it was a factor, I guess. Whoa. It was a huge bug. That's a huge gym bug. Should Just I pick it being up? Being silly. I'm gonna pick it up. It's running into the wall. Whoa! It's I touched falling it. on the floor. Yeah, maybe I could pick it Rex up. Nelson is touching it. He's putting it. Why would you put it there? Fine. Jesus Christ, man. Okay. It's on the recorder. Oh, my okay, God. It's <laughs> hacking the podcast. <laughs> Dude, that was... Whoa, that was nuts. Okay, this is the first time we've been attacked live on the podcast. <laughs> I almost lost a finger with that one. I swear <laughs> to God. How the fuck do we get back to the story after that bug? <laughs> All right, so... And after Thursday, I got sick. That's the point. That's the point we're trying to get at. Those are all things I ingested, and since then, I've ingested very little. And today, Sunday, we were recording this Sunday evening by 8.30. I did indeed go compete in the NABJJF tournament in Los first, Angeles today. you won your first round, right? No. <laughs> Wait, you told me that you got behind the guy that was standing up. That it was it's true. Injury. So it was a very quick fight, as I intended, man, because I had such little energy, just from like, I, I, I vomited yesterday morning. Barely well, drove home last night. Well, tell, tell us how much you've eaten between now and that breakfast. Several bananas at a smoothie that I vomited up over the course of, like, three days. Yeah, so like, Thursday, yeah, Thursday you had breakfast, didn't eat anything Thursday. Nothing, nothing left. And then... Nothing after that. Then Friday fri evening, I had oh, a smoothie, yeah. started vomiting. Saturday morning, so I had So you had at a least banana. a solid 24 hours before you had another bite of food. Yeah. Okay. And instantly vomited it. And then, so, let's go another 12, okay, so let's go another 24 hours to the Saturday morning. You I had sit. a banana around 1 o'clock. Okay, okay. So that was a big step in the right direction. Gave me hope. So that was about 53 hours <laughs> in. You got about a banana <laughs> from your breakfast. Had some applesauce a little while later. So 58 hours. <laughs> some applesauce. And then on the drive home, I had three quarters of a banana. But I got stuffed midway and couldn't finish. Oh, dude. It was madness. And so I, I came home, and obviously my parents are like, there's no way you're fighting. 
Like, there's no way. And I, I saw their points so clearly, but it was so obvious to me that I had to. Yeah. It was so necessary. It's such, like, a unique, like, perfectly cinematic, everything's going in the wrong direction, but perfectly. It but was, I had to do it. Yeah, yeah. It was one of those against all odds kind against of Against all right? odds, man. Yeah. Dude, literally, I woke myself up this morning by shitting my pants. Nice. That's what got me awake. Fuck yeah, dude. Just, like, a little... Oh, oh, oh. Dude, nice. <laughs> that's... I usually wake up to an alarm, but okay. today it was... That's a little more natural way to Ass piss. Up. Yeah, that's all right. Ass piss got me up. Yeah, yeah. That's all right. And so it was very sketchy, man. And, like, even once I got there, like, everything went wrong. Like, I got there at 12.30, because that's what I looked... Oh, excuse me. On the schedule, that's what it said, right? But I was looking at the wrong schedule. Like the schedule for yesterday, it's a two-day tournament. So I got there two hours early. I texted my, some of my teammates. I was like, yeah, you guys here yet? They're like, no, man. Like, we're just now leaving the house. Like, we'll be there in an hour. Like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like no rush. And so I was there just, like, way too early. Where, and just, where like, was the tournament? Cerritos. Cerritos College. Oh, yeah, so not very close. Oh, Cerritos College. Yeah, the place. The place. The place. We've both had athletic events there before. Rex Nelson used to be a world champion runner of some sort. Some sort of world. Yeah. More like California, but... <laughs> the world of California. It's more like Southern California, but... Champion of all of the world is Southern California. <laughs> and North so of San Diego, but continue. <laughs> <laughs> and so, yeah, it was just like a long fucking day, man. And I was there. As soon as I got in there, I pissed out my ass in the toilet. And that toilet was not fit for Christian butt cheeks, like, at all. It was disgusting in there. The, the toilet paper in the bathroom, the only one that I could find was, like, damp. Single ply, right? Not, even worse, man, it was damp. Oh, it was like someone dropped in a puddle, but there are no puddles to be seen. Oh, my God. It was, like, <laughs> just tampered. <laughs> what did it smell like? Nothing. Well, I, I don't know. There's a lot going on at the time. Yeah. I wasn't tuned into smells. <laughs> I was trying to stay alive. <laughs> You're using your other senses. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the whole day, I was just trying to stay alive. and But my match was sick, man. Like, I... Every, I got called last in my division, so I thought I, I got forgotten. That's just like a standard fear. Because, like, you don't really know when you're going to go on. There's, like, a set time that's, like, not very accurate, and you just kind of show up and stand around until someone calls your name. Yeah. And it's very possible. It's happened to me in the past where someone's called my name and I missed it. Oh, really? It happened to me in high school in Las Vegas. I missed out on, like, a really cool, like, match opportunity. Like in high school wrestling? Mm-hmm. And so since then I've just been very paranoid about it. And so I was just, like, pissing myself. I was, like, straight scared. Yeah. Like, oh, well, I missed my opportunity. Like, I did all these badass things. <laughs> I ate an edible at 11.30 in the morning just to calm my stomach, which helped a lot, man. It was, really? like, it was part CBD, part THC, okay. which, like, I try to explain CBD to some people, and, like, their instant reaction is, like, oh, CBD, the type of weed that doesn't get you high. It just doesn't. As if there's, like, no point to it. Like, it has no <laughs> other qualities. <laughs> like, that's just all it is. Like, it's just, like, it's grass. It just doesn't have the psychoactive... Yeah, to it, but right? what it does have is it makes your body feel amazing. Like it's a de-inflammatory. Inflammation is the cause. Anti-inflammatory. Okay, yeah. You and your words. <laughs> Good correction. <laughs> but so inflammation is just the main cause of like most bad things in your body. Yeah. To put it unscientifically. Yeah. It's just it, it's a lot of pain and like disease and stuff is fl- inflammation, and so it settled my stomach like immediately. But I was just like high the whole day. Yeah. Like from eleven thirty. That's after smoking in the backyard for breakfast, <laughs> so that I could have, um, I had some kale this morning. But, I mean, you prefer to fight while a little bit lit, right? Yeah, that's been my main thing, is um, edibles before competition. When did you start doing this? A couple months ago, in San Diego. Oh, really? Yeah, it's... You didn't it's, do this in Taiwan or anything? Well, no. you can't find boat out there, right? I could, but it was just sketchier. Like, I went to the store this morning to buy my one for today, like, on the way there. Yeah. Like, I, I went to the store, opened at 11. That's exactly when I went to the college. But in Taiwan, to find it is, like, you got to ask a guy who doesn't want to be known, who, like... Oh, okay. You know, if a place around here has great uh, edibles, they would be like, yeah, tell everyone you know, please. Like, yeah. we need... We want to sell these. But in Taiwan, my buddy sold edibles, or had them, and didn't even want to sell them. It was like, don't you fucking tell anybody. <laughs> and I was like, I try to buy them, and he's like, you know, that, these are kind of for me, like... Yeah, it, was just, it wasn't like a, a ah. selling environment. So in, in Taiwan, I did very little jiu-jitsu high. But since I, in California, I get high every day for jiu-jitsu. Yeah. Mm-hmm. How many did, so today you, was no different. You go to jiu-jitsu every day, right? Since I lost my job, pretty much. Except for, the, obviously, the past couple of days. But even like, um, so on Thursday, I was dying, and I went to jiu-jitsu that day, and I got smoked by these white belts. Oh, really? Like, I'm ranked like pretty like a lot higher than them. Yeah. And still just like... 
like five minutes in, my cardio is gone. I was on dead. Wednesday? This is on Thursday. Oh, I remember you telling me that's after yeah. you started getting the food poisoning, right? Yeah, yeah. I got yeah. sleeping all day, hadn't eaten, and then went to jujitsu and got smoked by these white belts. Yeah, you lasted like five minutes, right? Well, I took a break and I came <laughs> back and then like just kept being smoked. And so that was playing into my uh, consciousness today. It was, it was heavy on my mind. I was like, okay, I got like a couple minutes to fight this guy and then that's it. Yeah. So I went out there like crazy, like so fast, like, like so very aggressive. Does that, does that go against your usual like fighting style? No. What's your fighting style like? Um, so my cardio is really good, yeah. but my strength, I always assume the other guy's going to be stronger than me. Uh-huh. That's just like what I've noticed. Just odds are like I've never felt stronger than my opponent. Mm-hmm. And um, so I go in there and try to dance around and do some crazy stuff. Be slippery. Slippery, jump around, um, trip them up, and score points early. So I did that. I, I, I gave him an arm drag, like the most simple of moves. He just pulled his arm out of the way. Yeah. Just took his back standing. So he was like fully, he <laughs> didn't go to the ground. He was standing up, and I walked behind him, essentially. What if, you were to, if you were to watch in slow motion, that's what it would be. I'd just <laughs> walk behind him. <laughs> And then climbed just his back. Behind him, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Climbed his back, uh, took a hold of his neck, threw my entire weight on his back. So I got my two hooks in, which means my legs are wrapped above his hips. Okay. So you can picture like my belly buttons around his sternum. Okay. Up on his back. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. yeah, about that level. And so we fall to the ground, and then it's a really good position. That's six points right away. That's a lot of points for a jiu jitsu tournament. Yeah. Six. And so this is like. <laughs> My memory is a bit fuzzy, but maybe 15 seconds into the match. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so it's a, this huge, like, explosive move. Like, one of the coolest moves I've ever done. Like, yeah. it's a really cool, like, I didn't, if you had asked me beforehand, I would say, I don't think I can pull that off. Really? Yeah, it's, it's pretty ridiculous. But what I didn't do is when we fell to the ground, I didn't choke him right away. Oh, really? It could have ended the match. Oh, dude. If I just, like, applied 10 more seconds of energy. Why it's did, either. Why, why did you not? Conserving energy. Like, there's a saying in boxing, I don't know if you've heard this, where they say you can either go for the knockout or the victory. The idea being that in order to finish the fight, you have to expend so much energy that if you don't finish it there, you're going to lose. And so this is, it's kind of been fucking with me, especially my decreased cardio. So I decided to hold on to him. Especially with the passing of Muhammad Ali a couple weeks ago, too. I completely, irrelevant. completely understand. <laughs> it makes perfect sense, to be honest. It's irrelevant to the situation. Uh, it makes, yeah, but continue. <laughs> <laughs> and so my whole plan was, to, once I got him on his back, or once I got his back on the ground, was to hang out there. It's a very strong position for me. Yeah. But he just turned out of it. Like, just <laughs> like butter just got out of it. <laughs> And I was in his guard, and then like we kind of tossed around a little bit, and I swept him, got some more points, and then in a transition where we're going off of the mat. When you go off the mat, you're supposed to stop and start back in the middle. Yeah. But you have to wait for the ref to say something. You know, you mean you never stop until the ref says. Yeah. So he didn't stop, but I kind of did. I started like slowing down because we we're going back to the center. Lost your momentum. Yeah, and he threw up a triangle choke. I thought you were gonna say he threw up. Dude, that's what we were hoping for. I thought because like. I've been pissing out my ass for all these days that, like, maybe a little bit would come out into my opponent's nose Roll of out. some sort. Yeah, yeah. Well, biological warfare. I feel you. Because my coach, Dirty Ron Turner, was telling me a story about how Travis Nawaza got famous. Because he, he, he had a, his video on World Star Hip Hop where he farted on his opponent and his opponent threw up on the mat. <laughs> <laughs> this completely broke his concentration, right? Like, destroyed his will to live. Oh, God. So, unfortunately, that did not happen in my match. Like, how, do you, how did he get himself into that situation, into that position to fart? Like, was his butt near his face at all? Yeah, it's quite common in jiu-jitsu to have a butt near your face. Oh, really? Yeah, so the position that he got me in is a triangle choke where he's all the way on his back, right? And he kind of lifts up, like, so he's on his neck, and his legs are lifted up to my, butt, to my head area. Okay. And so my neck and my arm are extended through his legs. His legs are clenched behind my neck oh, and arm. Wow. Okay. And so it's a choke, but what he did is he switched it right away and got my arm and bent the fuck out of it. Yeah. Like, it went, like... I, I'm making a gesture to Rex right now. My arm is straightened, and my elbow raised about three inches from there, from that angle. It was disgusting. <laughs> that sounds absolutely... And so terrible. I tapped right away, yelled tap, yeah. which is, like, very important because, like, some people in jiu-jitsu tournaments, they have quite an ego about it and they think victory is the only option so they won't tap to those arm bars because you won't die on the spot. You know what I mean? That's why they say chokes yeah. are superior because yeah. a strong man 
if he doesn't tap to a choke, he just goes to sleep. Yeah. But a strong man who gets in an armbar can withstand the broken bone. Yeah. Like that. that it, there are people who can do that. I'm not one of them. I want no part of that. Fuck that <laughs> so I tapped. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. Like thank God. And then, um, yeah, it was just sick, man. Sonny was there. Sonny was filming the whole time. So there's gonna be a really funny video. Sonny's my buddy from uh, Modern Day. He's been on this podcast before. Um, I feel like you would have met him. I don't know. But he's an Indian dude who makes these really funny YouTube videos. He's very good at editing videos, and then he brought this, like, nice camera. Yeah. And so we just got, like, high as fuck, and he's just there, like, <laughs> commentating. Like, he kept calling everything a draft hook. I guess he's just making <laughs> up moves. Is that the one when, Marsh, when Morgan also did commentary with you? Mandrew. Yeah. Mandrew, Mandrew oh, and Morgan. Mandrew and yeah. Morgan, right? So Sonny took over for Mandrew's job. Mandrew okay. used to uh, film me and do commentary. Yeah. Which I think is just, like, a funny concept, like, because jiu-jitsu matches are kind of hard for people to watch. Yeah. But if there's someone commentating who doesn't know what they're talking about, I mean, quite funny. Quite comical. Yeah. Oh, I can do that for and sure. so I think Sonny was good at it. He just kept saying, Marshall the draft hook. Like that's <laughs> like it's, Marshall just, the draft hook. Like you just made nick- that up. Like that's your nickname, right? No, like that, that was the move I was doing. Like, yeah. So he, he, he's funny. Um, but yeah, man, I survived and I, I've just never been more tired in my life. So you tapped and then you're done for the day, right? Then I was done for the day. The whole thing was like a minute and a half. Nice. <laughs> nice, dude. No, I know what that's like. You know, I spent my entire day getting ready for a, you know, four minute to 14 minute race. You know, that's, you know, an entire, you know, weeks leading up for just, you know, a fraction of a time, dude. You know? Yeah. I know what that's like. It's crazy, huh? Yeah. And it's hard to explain to someone who doesn't understand. Like, well, I'm going to stand around, scared, I'm going to try not to piss myself. And then, um, it's literally like I think I'm gonna go fight somebody. It's like the longest, most anxiety ridden build to a drop of an EDM song. <laughs> and then the drop is probably like the most insane thing you've ever heard in your life. Blows your mind. <laughs> and then it's over. Yeah. yeah. I mean, That's it, a good analogy, man, because they're both like quite, um, obviously, there's a huge dopamine release of all of them. Yeah. You know, these things with my fights and your races, there's so much adrenaline. And like, did you always become friends with the guys you raced? Yeah, like a, just like a camaraderie. Yeah, yeah. Like immediately. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. For the, I mean, when you I was hug when I was in high school, the guys that were in my league, we didn't like each other, <laughs> because my high school Newport Harbor came into the Sunset League, like during my junior year of high school, and there was already guys in that league that th- th- thought they were hot shit, <laughs> and then me and <laughs> me and my other teammate came in and just started wrecking house on them so they didn't like us and we didn't like them it's the most amount of drama ever on this podcast yeah it was, it was, it was dra- fun. dramatic as fuck yeah we'd like talk, <laughs> we'd like go on to like the like die stat message boards and just like talk shit and stuff like that and like but Mike and I always won so that was cool like we we, we could back up what we had to say it's always a happy ending but once you get to like the higher you know competition levels like CIF and stuff like that like there's just like a you know the fact that you can get to that level there's like a, a mutual respect, like yeah, like the, the, you know, like you know, the person you're competing against is good. Like, yeah, you're not gonna compete against any scrubs at that level. That's how the belts work in jujitsu. Anyone blue belt in my division, like they've been doing it for a while. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like they they have at least a couple killer moves. Yeah, like I don't know if this guy's best move is his armbar, but if it's not, Jesus Christ, he's a savage. Like yeah. if he does something better than that. Yeah. Yeah. So that's cool. That's a good way to do it. No, fuck yeah. Do it with respect. So, enough talking about me, Rex. The big thing going on in your life is we're recording this an hour before we watch the finale of Game of Thrones. Oh. So you were here yesterday telling me all about your hypotheses and well, what's going down. So it's going to be interesting because no one's going to hear this until after Game of Thrones. True. So if you're listening to this and you haven't seen the finale and you plan on it, um, I don't know. I guess you could. I, we haven't seen it either. No, honestly. But like Rex, not, Rex has some insider info. If you're not watching the finale tonight, like you, you're up for spoilers tomorrow. Just, <laughs> I mean, sorry. I mean, it's, uh, you know, like, but do keep in mind, we haven't seen it. We're, no, I, we're not giving away the aim for sure. No, no. And I, I, I must say that none of these hypotheses, hypotheses and theories came from my own head. I, it's all secondhand. I'm just regurgitating what I like the most. Yeah, these yeah, from podcasts? Podcasts, the a Song of Ice and Fire subreddit. You know, like, Shout out the podcast you listen to. What is um, it? So the podcast that I most listen to is called History of Westeros Podcast. Mm. Um, you can find it on Apple Podcasts app. Um, there's another really good one called Radio Westeros. That's another really good one as well. 
Um, and it's interesting, actually, the people from Radio Westeros, they come and they, during the season, they come and make podcasts with the people from the history of Westeros. So mm. it's like two podcasts combine their powers into one super podcast. It's a way to do it. Yeah, so because normally there's each two people in, in each individual, in each podcast individually, and then they combine them so there's four people talking mm -hmm. about it, and they get some really good conversations and stuff like that. All right, so what's going on tonight, Rex? Well, first, refresh my memory, man. What happened last week? Episode so, 9. Episode 9 is... By the way, it's um, it still has a perfect ten out of ten rating on IMDb. Is it the only episode? It is the only Game of Thrones episode that has a perfect score. <laughs> I think the the one before that, the closest one to that, I think is like a nine point eight or something. But so in the last episode, it was crazy. It was you know Jon Snow and his sister Sansa Stark. You know they wanted to retake their ancestral home, Winterfell. From another guy named Ramsey Bolton, who's, an epic battle. Who's a sadistic, you know, complete asshole. By the way, you know, like he's just probably one of the worst people you could ever meet. And he took their home, and now they wanted to go get it back. Big ass battle. Um, Jon Snow was going, should have lost, but then he got trampled by three hundred people. Oh yeah, he was. He All the wilding stepped on him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's getting kicked around. He should have been. He should have been. He should have been dead. But like, oh, but there was one moment where like. Remember, so right before the battle, they sent out Jon Snow's younger brother. Rickon Stark. And Ramsay played a little game where he was shooting arrows at him. Yeah. And it was like, if you can get him, you got him, but like, I'm shooting arrows. And so the arrows struck Rickon, and then the army charged. So yeah. it's just Jon Snow out there, like, distraught. Because Jon Snow left his army to go to try to rescue, yeah. get to Rickon before an arrow hit him. And so there's one image that's the coolest thing of all time when Jon Snow <laughs> take. Ooh. Got some fireworks. <laughs> Sorry, I just farted. <laughs> <laughs> so Jon Snow takes out his sword, throws down his like scabbard. holster, scabbard, his scabbard, yeah, and then gets ready to fight an entire army. And there's just it's like a it's, a, it's a it's, cavalry charge. It's two seconds of an image of him ready to take on the whole cavalry. Are you talking about the coolest my, image of ever seen? Talking about my cover photo on Facebook. Is it? <laughs> <laughs> I think you're talking about my cover photo on Facebook. Because I, okay. I just put that up today, by the way. <laughs> yeah. Well, then you know about it. If you it's the coolest thing I've ever seen. I remember, like, when it happened, I was like, I gotta fucking remember that. Oh, yeah. No, yeah. <laughs> it is the best thing in the world. The most badass thing I've seen. And so then his army comes, they take over Winterfell. And so what's next? Like, what do they do after that? Well, They're first just chilling of, in Winterfell? Well, first of all, um, uh, Peter Baelish, he's a man, he's a. A top character, Littlefinger, also known as Littlefinger, he had taken control of the the place called the Vale in Westeros, and um, he took his army and at the last second, because Jon Snow's army was literally surrounded by Ramsay Bolton's army. Mm -hmm. and if you look back in history, it's the equivalent of the Battle of Kenny, where the Carthaginians encircled an entire Roman army, and then they just literally killed every single man in that army like they did exactly like what Ramsey was doing they're coming with the spears but they're completely enveloped around him mm -hmm. Carthage was led by that amazing general Hannibal I, I'm I listen to podcasts about it it's really fucking good but, love it but oh by the way here let me show you this showing pictures on an audio only podcast yeah everyone take a look <laughs> everyone listening take, you can edit out this part I'm not going to all right, so Rex is just showing me his cover photo. If you haven't seen it, friend request Rex Nelson on Facebook. You can find me on Facebook. <laughs> Anyways. Um, so what's happening tonight, man? Tell me everything. Well, so my predictions for what's going to happen tonight is I believe um, the audience is going to find out Jon Snow's true parentage, which is R plus L, which is like abbreviated as R plus L equals J, or Rhaegar Targaryen plus Lyanna Stark. Was Jon Snow? Because this whole time we've been told that Ned Stark is his father. Right. They say and that. And you tell me that's some bullshit. Yeah. They say that Jon Snow is Ned Stark's bastard through another woman. But what's really what everybody thinks is that when Lyanna Stark, she actually wasn't kidnapped by Rhaegar Targaryen. She ch chose to go off with him, and she decided to elope with him, and they had a child. God, there's like so much. Of so many layers leading up to this point that I just like I feel bad just talking about this point without explaining everything but I know I can't explain everything that's the dilemma of the show which I think they've done a really good job of so far yeah but that's why I'm skeptical for it like, it doesn't make sense to me how they could pull that off because 
Rhaegar has not been a big part of the show so far. He's been in it at all. Yeah, yeah, he's not talked about much. Whereas in the book, he's like a very big deal. They they talk about him a lot. Like, they do. I mean, and in the show, like, it's just like people. You got to think like if Ned Stark is portrayed as the epitome of honor and chivalry, like if he is that kind of if he's that kind of person, he should not have a bastard son. He right. Should not have a child out of wedlock because he is already married at the time. It seems out of character. It is him. seems completely out of character. Mm-hmm. And earlier in this season, we do see Eddard Stark going to the place where his sister was being kept at the end of the war. <laughs> Dude, sorry about that. Fireworks, man. Uh-huh. That's the fuck. Crazy. But, um... We see this in one of Bran's we see him um, in season visions. Six, in episode three, we see him go back to where young Eddard Stark went and re- rescued his sister. Right. So... But that scene cuts out right before he goes up into the tower. I believe at this point, in this episode, we're going to see what happens in that tower. Like he's going to come up. There's going to be Lyanna. a baby Jon Snow. He's going to come up to Lyanna, Star- Lyanna Stark, laying in a pool of blood, meaning she'd just given birth to Jon Snow, and she's going to make Ned promise her to raise him and take care of him as his own son. I and, see. And protect him. Like that's like going to be her dying wish because. If you think about, because Game of Thrones is based off of the book series called A Song of Ice and Fire, and if you think about Jon Snow's parentage, his mom was a Stark, his mother was a Stark, which is based in ice magic, and his father was a Targaryen, which is based in fire magic. So you take Jon Snow, you combine the two, Jon Snow is the Song of Ice and Fire. Like, he is the combination of the ice and fire in one person. So, like, they think, like, they think, like, the whole story is based around Jon Snow, but, like, the author of the series, he doesn't like to follow, like, the typical hero, like, you know, good guys wear white, bad guys wear dark, mm-hmm. you know, tropes of movies and stuff like that. So, like, he's trying to, like, he tries to break it up a little bit. So, I don't, like, I think in the later seasons and the later books, like, stuff's going to happen that doesn't play out how we think it's going to play. Like, Jon Snow's not going to, like, lead a cavalry charge to save the day at the very end, like... There's going to be something at the end. Like, it's going to be a bittersweet ending. Right. Which is the thing that keeps me going in this show, man. Because, like, you and I, we've both read all the books. Yeah. We've seen every episode. Yeah. And everything you just told me, man, like, I, I never once thought that, like, Rhaegar Targaryen would be his dad. I always just assumed Ned Stark was the dad. You know, I yeah. believe what I'm told. Yeah. In the books. Like, okay. Which, like, is what keeps it exciting for me, you know? Like, I've talked to some people about it. You know, I remember being very distraught. When I found out, or when I read in the book, uh, Joffrey died. I read that before I'd seen the episode. Oh, really? But I had seen most of the other episodes. But you were distraught, like... Because I was so surprised, man. I started telling this story in the first part of the podcast, but, like, that was the last time that I had food poisoning, was oh, really? when I came across that part in the book. <laughs> oh, really? So I'm just holed up in this $5 a night bamboo bungalow in northern Thailand, yeah. vomiting with, like, one joint left of Thai weed. <laughs> yeah. And so I'm just kind of puffing on it, and, like, I'd seen... The whole third season, which ends with the Red Wedding yeah. and Rob Stark dying, yeah. which is also in the third book. So I was right. wrapping up the third book. I thought, like, okay, this is about done. But it has the Purple Wedding, too. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And then all of a sudden, I thought it was just wrapping up loose ends, and then it would just end the same way this series did. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, Joffrey's dead. All of a sudden, Tywin's dead. Like, all this shit just unfolded on me. Yeah. <laughs> no, for real. <laughs> which is so cool. But then I started telling someone about that, and he's like, yeah, you saw it coming, right? I'm like, no, man, I haven't seen (laughs) anything coming this whole time. And I still don't. Like, I still, I don't know. I don't don't try to to guess. Honestly, if I had to recommend the series to people, I would tell them to watch the TV show first and then read the books. That's the way I did. Well, I did it halfway. I would say watch the TV show so you can get an idea of what the characters look like. And so, you know, because the, the TV show... Really, it's just, you know, the work is cut out for them. Like, it just shows what you have to see, Mm -hmm. and it's very straight to the point, and it doesn't elaborate on all the things, because a TV show cannot have all these different branches of a story, you know, like intricate plot details and stuff like that, like little subliminal things that things in the book can get away with, Mm -hmm. you know? So the TV show is very straightforward, you know, it's quick, it's exciting, it's great to watch. And then when you want to expand on that and learn about the side stories and you want to flesh things out, go back and read the books. You know another reason why you should tell people to watch TV instead of read the book? Is who the fuck reads books, man? 
Like it might just might just be me and you. I mean, like I re- if you if you present that, like how many people have you talked into reading? No, nobody reads. That's <laughs> yeah. what I'm saying. Yeah. It's such a hard sell. Like, I tell people, dude, they're like, only a thousand pages. I tell people, like, yeah, I love to read. I'm reading. I'm re- I read all the time. They're like, Are you s- what? Like still? I, th- I mean, you. D- like you read stuff on the internet? No, I go to the library and get fucking books. And they're like, what the f-? Like, You read Facebook? What are you saying? <laughs> you know, you read words on the computer screen, what? <laughs> yeah, so that, that's, I think that's the real reason you should just watch the show. It's more realistic at this point. Yeah. You pause for a sec after the bathroom. Oh, my God. Travesty, I know. You go to the bathroom. I know, I watch know. Watch out with your microphone, man. You can pull off the whole thing. Good call. Rex Nelson trying to leave the table, still mic'd up. Tales of a Cock podcast is sponsored by Apples. Here to tell us all about Apples, Rex Nelson. One apple a day keeps the doctor away, as they've been saying for the past 20,000 years. But is it true, Rex? It is 100% true. Not only are apples, you can eat a million of them if you want, but they're also very high in fiber, so they'll clear out your entire system. Tell the people, Rex, how do they buy apples in a way that supports the podcast? Just go to your local Trader Joe's, specifically at the one at UC Irvine, and you can buy... Preferably, the Honey Crisp apples are about one twenty nine. <laughs> um, they're very big right now, so you get about two two and a half apples in one. I can't finish one myself; I get a little too sick. I start to feel sick after about two thirds of it. But you can put it in the fridge and save it for later. Or split it with a lady. Come by Couch Register Four; I'll give you ten percent off. <laughs> I'll give you the employee discount. All proceeds and such go to the Tales of the Cock podcast. <laughs> awesome. Well, we're gonna call it a night, man. I'm fucking exhausted. We I survived have, death today. We have I feel Game like I of Thrones. Death. We have Game of Thrones probably in a, like within an hour. Whenever Zacharias Targaryen decides to text me, I'm ready. All right, guys, thanks for listening. Happy if anyone night. listen to this, send me a message. I'll send you a story that I typed out on the internet, never seen before. It might involve hookers or drugs. I don't know. Good night and good luck. <laughs>